will be uh, Ashley will be answering questions in the background. And just noticed uh, uh, the record button for this session. Even though I'm recording on YouTube, recording here wasn't started, so it is now. So welcome again, everyone. Thanks for joining us for the International Online User Group Forum. And this is Stan Heller speaking. I'll be a presenter today. This is your question chat box. If you have a comment or question, just chat it in here. And either Ashley, our support consultant, uh, who's with us from Cornelius uh, headquarters, will try to answer them for you, and he'll flag any questions that might be uh, valuable for the whole group. And I see he's already been doing that, so, <laughs> so that's pretty fantastic. This should close up on you during the webcast, and all you'll see is this orange arrow here up at the top left, and just click on that, and uh, that'll open it up uh, for you. All right, let's see. What else do I have to, to do here? <laughs> okay, make sure my screen is advancing. Yep, there it is. Okay, so all is good. And Diana's with us from Charlevoix, so it says everything is good. So that's all good. A great uh, turnout again. So thank you, everyone. Um, we love these international forums with the international flavor, and it's great to look at what's going on in other markets uh, outside of our own and get some ideas from people who are using the program, and that's the whole purpose for today. We do have a risk disclaimer. I'd encourage you to read through the top part here, but in the bottom you'll notice everything you will see in here today is provided for educational purposes only, should not be considered as investment advice and the information is designed to empower you to make your own investment decisions. These decisions are yours and yours alone to make. Okay. All right. I think we're all good there. Let me just have a look here. <laughs> yeah, all right. So that's all good. Oh, there we go. All right. I was, I was wondering what happened to the second screen I've got going here. It kind of disappeared on me with all the paraphernalia I've got going on and I was a little late getting started because I did have a little glitch or issue just prior so you know it gets the old heart racing a little bit prior so all is good. <laughs> all right and then I gotta just change one last thing. There we go. Okay. Uh, okay, so uh, Lucine says, looks like petroleum is on the rise. It says buying. Well, <laughs> it's been on the rise for a few days. So we watch the industry graph or the uh, sector graph, and uh, that's the best way to track that. And uh, similarly with CAE, uh, Stephen was asking, would you sell and DGC a gold stock and SRIM? Um, we'll, talk, we'll, we'll show you some graph setups today. And then I think it's up to you to make your own decision. Only you know what's going on in your portfolio. Uh, CAE might be a, considered a long-term hold because of its dividends and, and uh, long-term performance. But that's always up to you. And look at the current graphs and depending on your goals. So we'll get into some of that. Thanks, Ashley, for, uh, for flagging those uh, for me. Okay, so... Slide's not advancing. That's because I wasn't advancing. Let's get going here. There we go. So welcome again. The purpose for our monthly forums, further your knowledge of the VectorVest system, share current ideas and strategies for making money and protecting wealth. So we're going to talk about the August hot stock picking contest in some detail, look at some of the top stocks and the worst stocks from that contest, and then we'll take a look at the current uh, leadership in the uh, in the current September hot stock picking contest and this is an exciting one where the user group leaders and their members have the opportunity to um, to close out positions and replace them and it just makes it a little more interactive and and uh, interesting I think overall so we'll see how that all turns out our Saturday forums, the International Forum, we create opportunities to interact and share ideas with other members of our VectorVest community. I was speaking with one of our YouTube uh, specialists this week and uh, he said that when you're watching this on YouTube, you can actually communicate with other uh, 
uh, attendees, which is kind of interesting. I don't know. I haven't done that myself, but anyway, just something interesting. But if you've got a comment or question, please do chat it in here, and uh, that's your way to communicate and share your comments and ideas. Um, now, Michael says there's no sound, and Ashley, if you wouldn't mind to just let Michael know to turn up his speakers, make sure they're plugged in, and if he still doesn't get it, he may have to uh, log out and log back in. And uh, for anyone else, if that happens to you, that's what you have to do. Make sure you close any open tabs and give us your full attention, and that should help uh, on all of that as well. We want to promote the meetings and activities of our VectorVest user groups. We see the value in that, and uh, several of the user group leaders commented that uh, the stock picking contest was a real useful exercise for some fun and learning and fellowship, and so we'll talk about that today. But there's nothing better than getting together face-to-face -face with your fellow uh, investors and sharing ideas uh, about strategies and and stocks and the market timing. It really helps to have uh, uh, that group uh, sharing and thinking going on. Yeah, Jerry says sound and screen are good, so that's uh, that's great. And Herbert, Herbert, that's from up Edmonton area, Jerry. And then Herbert says it's all good in Mason, uh, Georgia, as well. So I think we're all good. <laughs> and Alessandra's here from Dallas, so that's great. We've got a great turnout. And then we want to provide a forum for VectorVest investors who do not live near a user group community. And I'll have a slide a little bit later on. If you don't have a user group community near you uh, and you've been a, a subscriber for at least a year, you can possibly organize a group. And that will be researched by our VectorVest user group coordinator, Kathleen. So something... Uh, Oh, <laughs> Herbert says, uh, Macon, like bacon. <laughs> and I said Mason, so Macon like bacon. Thank you, Herbert, for that uh, correction. <laughs> oh, dear. I thought there was a Mason somewhere, but maybe it's not spelled that way, that's for sure. Anyway. <laughs> and uh, Mark is with us, says, uh, sound is great in Perth, Australia, where I have family as well. And... Uh, that's pretty fantastic. Again, I know it's early in the morning there, so pretty cool. So we're going to go through the market timing, and then we'll get right into the special presentation. We'll hear from a few of our user group leaders. I'll look for them in the attendee list and activate their mics and ask them to review their, their comments that they submitted to me and uh, add anything they might wish, and, and we'll kind of go from there. And it'll be a, a little bit depending on how much time we have and how many questions uh, come in for them. But uh, we're just very delighted uh, that they've all participated in that way. So I think it's always, always valuable to look at the overall world markets. And VectorVest gives us that insight with our seven uh, different VectorVest countries that we have going on. And I know I hadn't looked at this for a while, and I was looking at it this week, getting ready for uh, today, and I found it um, maybe not surprising, but just interesting that Singapore and Hong Kong have really struggled since our last uh, get-together in August, um, and they were struggling before that. But you can see Singapore has actually turned uh, bearish uh, on a year-to-date uh, basis. And Hong Kong lost some ground, and uh, well, they're now in a confirmed up, both countries. So hopefully they're going to go on a tear. But I think this has a lot to do, and maybe if somebody's tuning in and trading in those markets, you can let us know a little bit more. But this, this probably has a lot to do with the U.S.-China uh, trade situation uh, that seems to be ongoing. Um, every time there's, there's a little bit of positive news, the market goes up. But overall, there's still lots of concerns that we're not going to get a, a deal that's favorable and it could harm the economies in a lot of uh, companies. Yeah, and, and Barry says the Hong Kong protests have probably um, had a pretty big disruption there as well. And Kamel echoes that. and. Uh, Norm says um, protests in HK. Uh, 
yeah, Alessandra the same. So I think that's a big factor uh, on all of that. So, uh, and Wayne is asking, where do we find these charts? Wayne, uh, you, you won't find them all because um, you, you probably only have one country if you live in the U.S., and that would be your U.S. database. And if you live in Canada and the other countries, you will have your own country plus the U.S., uh, but the other countries are um, an extra monthly uh, fee or annual fee if you wish to, uh, uh, to have a, a third, second or third country. So I'm fortunate I get a chance to, uh, to have a look at them uh, for this international online forum. So listen, here's Canada. Um, you know, <laughs> it doesn't feel like it. But Canada's actually had a pretty good year to date. We're up 14.55% with the Vector S composite. Um, but we've been going sideways for such a long time and in a confirmed down for such a long time. It just doesn't feel like it. And I know from emails that I've been getting and speaking with uh, fellow investors that um, a lot of um, our members have lost quite a bit of ground uh, just kind of holding into their their long-term positions, but uh, there's been weakness, and so they've lost uh, some ground. I've, uh, the ones I've spoken to, most uh, most of them are at 14% or more for the year, uh, but uh, it still hurts a little bit when you've been in the 20% range or more and fall back. So right now, the color guard is mildly bullish. Uh, VectorVest advocates caution. You can see we've not got a confirmed up call. Uh, we're the only country left to get a confirmed up, and that's because our market timing indicator uh, has not risen above one. That's a requirement in most countries other than the U.S. and Europe where they use the buy-sell ratio uh, rather than the MTI. So we're just waiting, and you can see, though, we've got a couple of stars here, and I actually thought we had a star on... Friday as well. I think I did this chart a little bit early before the software completely updated, but uh, uh, we've got momentum behind these green lights and the buy sell ratio is starting to move up. So, you know, the bottom fishing stocks have actually uh, been doing okay. And just like the U.S., there's, you know, the last week uh, there was a little bit of a change from a lot of uh, growth in the dividend paying stocks. Uh, to more bottom fishing, and uh, I know Don Wellwood is with us from the Colbert User Group, and he certainly has exploited that in the current um, hot stock picking contest, uh, uh, buying stocks early in the in the market rally, and uh, looking for bottom fishers a little bit as well. But we'll hear from Don about that later. On the U.S. side, um, they did get the confirmed up call uh, this week. Um, and, um, and the market's been doing well from there. VectorVest advocates buying safe, undervalued stocks that are rising in price. 16.97% um, um, up to date. Uh, Tom, by the way, says the U.S. also has a star. So I guess I got too early a jump on getting these uh, slides ready. <laughs> so we've got momentum. The RT uh, moving averages are are bullish with the RT kicker here, and uh, that's giving us momentum on this move. But we'll talk about it a bit later, uh, looking at the graphs. There is a little bit of resistance overhead. If we can break through that, then we're away to the races for sure. But there is some resistance, and I think that's why Dr. Toledo, in his strategy uh, comments, suggested a little bit of caution uh, is still advised on the U.S. market. Australia, they've had the biggest run, and you can see they actually got the uh, confirmed up call back on Friday, August 30th. Um, not a lot of strong momentum from there, but the buy-sell ratio has been improving consistently. Uh, not a lot of green lights in the price column is really what I'm talking about there, and actually a, a primary wave down right at the moment but 18.53% year-to-date, and I know a lot of the model portfolios there, not a lot, but some of the model portfolios in Australia are doing much better than that, and uh, so something to take a look at. Color Guard is neutral. VectorVest not advocating buying stocks right now. The UK up 14.04% uh, year-to-date. 
color guard is mildly uh, bullish. Uh, and when we have that uh, guidance, it's always uh, advocating buying safe, undervalued stocks that are rising in price. And I think you can add in rising industries or sectors <laughs> when you listen to today's um, user group leaders about uh, some of their insights. Uh, so confirmed up call on September 6th and uh, still moving up, but um, just a little couple of yellow lights here on Friday. Uh, the Tom, oh, and Tom's been answered by uh, uh, Ashley quite nicely here, but uh, the star just means there's momentum behind the price um, movement, either to the upside or the downside. The RT kicker, again, showing that, that strength. Singapore, again, um, they had been positive up until recently, but now down 0 0.30 year to date. So any kind of a disruption, uh, whether it's directly related to the market or, or news outside that affects uh, businesses and economies, we see the impact uh, in Singapore. And um, the color guard is mildly uh, bullish, even still, we got a green light. Uh, today and I think those uh, the protests in Hong Kong have subsided a little bit. Maybe that's helping a little bit. Got a confirmed call on Friday, and Europe uh, up 13.99 percent. So lots of um, news there with um, a new prime minister and uh, trying to reach a new deal on Brexit and all of that having a bit of an impact, but boy, lots of green lights showing up in the color guard there. They do have the star on Friday and a couple of days prior and a couple of days prior to that, confirmed up call came on uh, September uh, 5th when the market had moved higher, two consecutive uh, five-day periods. So things are looking better there. Hong Kong, 5.85%, mildly bullish now, confirmed up call and uh, looking much better there. Yeah, Neil uh, from Ontario here in Canada says, nice to see the green and the color guard again. Uh, the world markets are moving up again, and that is so important uh, for all of us. Uh, Christine says, uh, I see there was a confirmed up call in the U.S. on September 17th and then a confirmed down two weeks later. Any thoughts on getting a repeat this year? Well, <laughs> that's always a concern and uh, you never ignore a confirmed up or down signal, whether it's Canada or the U.S., um, but there tends to be more whipsaws right now in the U.S. market uh, than Canada, for example, and I'm going to show a little chart uh, on that uh, on the Canadian side anyway, but there tends to be a little bit more uh, whipsaws. You tend to want to get in a little bit earlier, maybe on the DEW signal in the U.S. Uh, and take advantage of that up move a little bit earlier be because uh, right now the confirmed up calls um, you're not you're not always lasting as long <laughs> so uh, so that's a little bit of a, a factor for sure um, when you say September 17th by the way I guess you're talking about last year right <laughs> I just realized we're not quite there at September 17th yet but anyway uh, all right Yeah, Darius uh, made a comment that I can't repeat, but uh, the essence is the tweets uh, from the U.S. president can make the markets move on a, on a regular basis. Uh, in fact, uh, he, uh, his A's acknowledged uh, a Friday, I think a week ago, uh, when the markets were really turning bearish, um, he tweeted because he needed an upturn. He needed an uptick. Uh, so, <laughs> so you know, we don't have that indicator yet uh, um, that, that tells us what's going to happen when, uh, when a tweet comes out, unfortunately. Jim Penna would say we're working on it. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's, 
Yeah. Billy says the U.S. markets tweets and tariff related sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> lots of comments there that are very interesting. And thank you. I just can't repeat them. <laughs> All right. I, I haven't done this for a while and I thought it was valuable to do this. These are the global markets uh, ETFs that I track and uh, it's interesting that Greece has may, remained among the leaders from early in the new year and is currently up about 35%. So you can take these ETFs, put them in a watch list in the same way I've been doing, and it kind of gives you some insights too as to what's going on. Now Canada, the EUWC, had a terrible performance last year underperforming the TSX, for example. Uh, this year, they're outperforming the TXX, and I mentioned that uh, in April, I think, or March, I did the last review of these. They were already outperforming, and that's continued. So hopefully this is interesting. Uh, Poland was the big winner last year, and this year uh, down 5.78% year to date. So just always interesting. The markets are always changing, and it's interesting also that Russia has really moved up the board. And so a couple of, a couple of different uh, ETFs here that you might uh, take a look at and look a little closer. And again, the relative timing, moving average, uh, or, or just the relative timing itself, uh, when it turns positive and, or even when it starts to move up, it really is the most effective indicator I've seen for ETFs. It's pretty fantastic. Uh, yeah, Marty is asking, there's, there might be different, there's, you know, for example, Russia, we've got two ETFs, uh, and, uh, both for Russia, uh, the holdings, uh, generally are, are different. Um, for example, we've got three or four U.S. Uh, ETFs here. We've got the Russell, the NASDAQ, the Dow, and the holdings and the focus might be different. So that's really, uh, the reason for that. And I could probably eliminate some of those because you can see Europe, they're all kind of together here, right? Not a lot of differences. It, with Europe, some of them are using the uh, Euro monetary system, and uh, it, that's just some of the differences, okay? All right, I want to move on here. Market timing, um, I'm going to spend a bit of time on market timing because it's always valuable and I think important. But in Canada, technology shares shined uh, uh, last week and so that helped the market move higher we did get above this resistance area here and the strategy says if the market continues to move higher and the MTI crosses above one we could see a confirmed up call as early as Monday and we actually got up to 1.0 on the MTI on Friday intraday before falling back in the afternoon. Um, the market or the MTI will have to close not just at 1.0, it has to close above 1.0 in order for us to get a confirmed up call. But everything else is in place. Um, the MTI is just the one holding us back, but the price of the composite has been moving higher week over week for two consecutive five week uh, periods. We were higher Friday than Thursday, another criteria. But I did not like the wicks on top of these two candles on Thursday and Friday. So the market was higher and pulled back both days. So the buyers are having a little trouble pushing us over that last level. So look for that on Monday. If it gets above there, then there's no overhead resistance going forward. The one little concern um, you can see on the TSX earnings, this is the TSX composite. It's been fairly well rising, but the TSX earnings indicator by VectorVest, a proprietary indicator using a moving average of the earnings, it's been dropping and is just hanging on to above one. If we fall below one, we will be in a bear market scenario, according to Dr. Delito's truth index.
<laughs> and Eric says uh, he doesn't have the same optimism. Uh, read the oil market, even though OPEC has again agreed to limit output. Uh, meanwhile, where where do the safe haven assets uh, exist? I'm sure is the question. So we'll be talking about that. But uh, um, my essay a week ago Friday talked about the dividend payers. Uh, REITs and utilities were at the top of the sector list, and uh, they've fallen back a bit with the rotation in the market, but I think that's still a safe haven, along with gold, which pulled back as well and is getting a little bit volatile, but still um, from the QE and the Midas touch and our own industry graph in Canada, uh, still bullish on mining. All right, so again, we have a case for bull market earnings, inflation, and interest are rising. And then my views, better returns, less stress. Here's where I just talk about the model portfolios again. I've written about them before. Um, just a, you know, a, a, an easier way to invest with some rules-based proven performance with these model portfolios. Uh, you can see the prudent portfolio on the right has been our best performer. It's up uh, more than 26% year to date as of Friday, September 26. I think it's fallen back a little bit from there. Um, but when I was doing the slide, it was there. And uh, it's up 36% ARR since inception in January. And then the retirement portfolio is focused on growing dividends year over year. And this does not include the dividends, and it's up 18% uh, year to date. So just food for thought um, to consider uh, tracking the model portfolios, using the action plan, or just putting the stocks in a watch list would be a good way to go. And I know there's other model portfolios in the U.S. and Australia and elsewhere that have been doing very well also. And then I did want to draw to your attention, this is a six-year end-of-day market timing graph showing the confirmed calls, the down signals, the down triangles, the up triangles. And what's interesting over here on the right, um, a summary provided by our friend Dr. Gord Nixon out of Kelowna. He's presented to our international online user group forum on the, uh, the high CI strategy. And he's been tracking this, and he shows on confirmed up calls, the range for the confirmed up calls is 65 to 257 days, and the average trading days is 124. And that strongly outpaces the confirmed down average trading days uh, to the downside, which is 97, and the range 43 to 2002. This is from about September 2013 going forward and then currently we've got we received the uh, down signal the confirmed down on May 13th and uh, up until Friday that's been 86 days so we're getting pretty pretty close to being due for a confirmed up call right <laughs> all right And uh, let's see what else I can say. Okay. Nick says, any plans to add to the model portfolios um, with short, you know, uh, for example, um, number five has some shorting. Um, I can tell you about number five uh, that, uh, yes, it does have shorting, but I think it's only been forced to short um, a, just a small handful of times with only a few stocks traded to the downside. But that's a good point. I may just change that up going forward. That'd be a good suggestion, I think, because a lot of investors don't short. So here's the six-year end of day. Interesting. Here's the six-year weekly graph. And what's what I found interesting about this especially is that early in the confirmed down calls, you will get a pullback to the 65 week moving average and then a little bounce from there. And then 
as you get further into the confirmed up situation and the 65 day moving up, eventually you're going to get a break below the 65 day or sorry 65 week moving average and it can be quite a significant waterfall down from there. But here, this is why we always suggest to subscribers that you don't necessarily go out and sell everything on a confirmed down. You just manage the positions you own, but you want to be a buyer fairly early in the confirmed up calls to take advantage of the early momentum. And then you may be able to ride out some of these early confirmed down calls, but eventually after you know, two, three, four confirmed downs, you might start to expect a more significant pullback, and especially when you get below the 65 day. Okay? I found this interesting and fascinating, uh, so hope you did too. This is a, a 1.30 line, and typically we start to, to see a little momentum loss when we get there, when, when we get this high sort of a, an overbought condition for Canada. All right, so a couple of quick notes. Uh, Lethbridge, we have our Smart Investing Made Easy with our user group meeting on September 28th, so you're welcome to attend that and bring a guest. It's free. And uh, similarly in Ottawa on uh, October uh, 12th, um, free event and... Uh, Looks like we're getting some, some good numbers there already, so welcome to join us. If you live in the area, please join us. The U.S. side, uh, again, a comment about the uh, compromises between the U.S. and China, but the price did happen to move up, but we are at this resistance area. Notice we had a doji Friday, we had a doji Thursday, so a little bit of indecision as we get up to these resistance areas that are kind of a long-term resistance, but the confirmed call is, is there. Uh, Dr. Lito wrote about the ultimate retirement solution, so I just want to draw that to your attention. I thought it was pretty uh, fascinating and uh, always a good read. I did want to draw your attention to the SPY, and this, this looked identical to the Russell and some of the other charts, uh, we had a doji on um, Thursday and then a bearish engulfing on Friday. So that can signal um, a reversal to the downside, especially after a pretty nice uh, run up. Doesn't always happen. I'm hoping that we get a, a breakout above this resistance area. And if we do, we're off to the races. And often after a confirmed up call, that'll happen. Maybe after a little bit of a pause here. But uh, just did want to draw that to your attention. And especially since Dr. Lito said right here in the strategy section, uh, the bad news bears still think it's not enough to stave off the recession they've been hoping for. So enjoy the rally, but continue to be careful. All right. Does that make sense? Enjoy the rally, but continue to be careful. And uh, the Fed meeting is coming up next week, and Christine says, uh, uh, buy on, you know, buy on the rumor and sell on the news. I guess that's a question. I don't know what everybody's thinking about that. Uh, there's some indication that the Fed uh, will lower the interest rates. That seems to be uh, the consensus but we just don't know. And, uh, you know, will uh, Chairman Powell kind of, uh, you know, do what President Trump wants and lower the rates maybe even more than a quarter point? We don't know, but he's getting a lot of pressure. <laughs> Canada, we just had our Bank of Canada meeting uh, just over a week ago and uh, Bank of Canada held the interest rates. User group notices, um, again, you can get all the notices. Uh, the focus here is really all about the user groups. And uh, you can go to the Views tab, uh, click on the drop-down menu here, go to the user groups, and you can see where all the user groups are listed. Click on the blue links if you want more details 
about dates and times. We put our international online user group forum in there for your registration as well. Okay. And then um, if you live in an area where we don't have a group, but you think it's big enough to support one, Kathleen can check that out and um, send you information uh, about possibly becoming a, a user group leader in your area. And uh, speaking with Kathleen last week, there's been uh, just a, these contests have really generated a lot of interest. And so there will be some new groups starting for sure. But just give her uh, a quick email if you have some interest and she'll give you the, the whole scoop. And then for articles and recordings from past online forums, not every country, unfortunately, can access these. But when you go to our blog at vectorvest.ca, uh, then you can find uh, articles about previous uh, forums and a whole lot of other, all my essays go in there, or most of them at least, uh, go in there and you can access uh, those. Any questions before we move on and get to the uh, HSPC contest? Uh, Andre, we're just still looking for a user group leader in Calgary. So if it's something you're interested in, please contact uh, um, Kathleen. Uh, Kamel, I, I think um, it would be great. And uh, uh, I know you're a regular um, attendee to our, our webinars and you provide a lot of great insights and not that that's necessarily a requirement of a user group leader uh, you, you do need to have obviously knowledge of the, of the program but you also just need to be able, one who can organize a meeting and draw out uh, participation that's a big big thing of it yep oh <laughs> yeah Montreal's a little distant for me to be the head <laughs> Camille <laughs> I don't mind traveling but that one's a little bit far <laughs> Yep, from the U.S., you can get to our blog at vectorvest.ca, U.S. and some of the other countries. <laughs> Kamel says he was joking. All right, well, let's move on. Um, we're going to talk about the best performing hot stocks and real-world trading lessons from Vectorvest user group hot stock picking uh, challenge. Um, we had some great results there and some great stock picks, so we want to go through all of that. Uh, just to refresh your memories, uh, Coburg was the first place finisher with an overall gain of 20.36% uh, from uh, Ontario here in Canada, 90% winners. Regina, Saskatchewan here in Canada, 18.38%. And 100% winners, all 10 gold stocks. This was the contest where you picked your 10 stocks prior to um, August 1st and then you held them through to August 30th. There was no opportunity to make changes, so <laughs> a real challenging uh, contest and format, I would say. Uh, San Antonio, up 7.73%, 50% winners, and then some other strong performances, um, and then uh, it dropped off a little bit, but um, everyone sh picked some good stocks along the way, and I think learned a lot as well. And in terms of the top 10 stocks for gainers, uh, we see Harmony here at 55.23% was picked two times, picked by uh, seventh place Houston and 12th place Appleton. So we'll look at those uh, these charts and see perhaps why they pick them. Uh, MCRB uh, picked uh, by San Antonio in uh, third place in our contest. And then DRD, uh, gold position here, um, picked by Coburg and third place San Antonio. Nugget, 45% uh, uh, gain, was picked by 13th place Kansas City and 25th place Scottsdale. And Perry uh, was only picked by fifth place Columbus and maybe uh, We'll hear from uh, Terry on how they managed to pick that one. Uh, Apps was next at 38 and then on down the list. And then uh, AU, by the way, uh, picked by Coburg, Regina, Canberra, uh, Australia, and uh, by Oxford, UK as well. I did 
kind of miss uh, apps here, but pick to uh, pick twice as well. And then uh, these are your top losers. A uh, little speculation here that gold maybe had run its course, and so the triple leveraged ETF uh, for gold dust uh, suffered a 37% loss for the individual user group there. And then you see some of the others um, with some fairly big losses. And when we look at the charts, the charts, I think you'll see sort of the logic behind the selection uh, of these uh, stocks and ETFs, but um, they didn't pan out. <laughs> and some of them, you could see that there might have been trouble coming. Okay. And then the top five most picked gainers, uh, ENTH was uh, just a, you know, a strong stock mentioned in the hot stock picks in the enhanced color guard many, many times picked there. So it was uh, picked 10 times and had a 30, 37% gain. Kirkland, uh, one of the best performing gold stocks, both in Canada and the U.S., trades both up 36%, picked nine times. Uh, PAGS, pick seven. Uh, Visa, pick six. Uh, Heiko in the aerospace, picked um, five times. Uh, NVCR, five times. Uh, Starbucks up 29% and picked five times as well. And then the most picked losers, EHTH, which had been on a nice roll uh, in leading up to the contest and then kind of really fell off a cliff. And same for some of these other stocks as well. And Gush is the, uh, is the oil as well. So somebody was really trying to be preemptive and try to figure out what might happen to petroleum stocks and the gold miners. And, uh, and they just kept going. Uh, up to the upside and cause these two um, leveraged ETFs to uh, to really crater. All right, and uh, and with the overall market not performing quite so strongly, TQQQ uh, down about eight percent as well. With sort of the Nasdaq uh, triple leveraged ETF there as well. All right, so hopefully that was interesting to everyone. Uh, Renee says, Stan, how did you create this list? Renee, I'd like to tell you it took me three days, <laughs> but it really didn't. I just um, did image, created images of the leaders that you'll see in a minute and, uh, and just uh, did an Excel spreadsheet, and it was pretty quick and easy. <laughs> so you could, you could do the same. It, uh, it maybe took me an hour, eh, maybe, a, maybe a couple of hours. I'm not sure. Not very long. Uh, Gordon says, how come some of the top five aren't on the top ten list? Oh, the top five uh, uh, gainers? Um, yeah, um, I, I think because I put them over, over here uh, uh, is the reason. <laughs> so I think that was the reason. But you can see, yeah, there's some, some good gainers in here as well. All right. All right, well, let's move into the groups. Uh, we have Al Essen, our user group leader from Atlanta. And uh, you can see the best uh, uh, pick was CPRX, Catalyst Pharmaceuticals. We had quite a few pharma stocks uh, picked. And, uh, and so uh, that was, that was uh, a pick from Atlanta. And so it's kind of interesting that um, a lot of our groups, uh, they may not have finished you know, top 10, but they still had some good picks along the way, and that was certainly uh, one of them. Um, the investment style was speculative. The selection method looked at stocks with earnings uh, during this period that, that had performed well in 2018, and then, unfortunately, not so much for 2019. <laughs> um, Favorite graph indicators, they actually didn't use um, graph indicators other than last year's performance and earnings during the month of August. So they went back and looked at uh, um, good, strong performances, sort of taking that seasonality approach. And unfortunately, it just didn't work out. And sometimes that happens. Um, uh, I, I, I do like to follow a bit of seasonality using the VectorVest program, doing exactly what uh, L and his group did but it just didn't work out here in this case. 
uh, their custom uh, search, looked at performance from August 1, 2018 to August 31st, 2018, and then cherry picked based on earnings dates for the month of August and uh, tried to spread the dates, stocks amongst the different weeks. Risk management uh, tried to keep no more than two per sector. Uh, insights for sharing would never do this again. In other words, his, uh, the trading methodology didn't didn't work in this case. Uh, so no trading during the period should cause us to look for more uh, prudent stocks would be his approach for this type of contest going forward. And uh, post earnings, uh, so surprises would be minimal. So in other words, make sure there's no earnings dates coming up. Uh, Atlanta meets on September uh, 14th this morning. This is why Al can't be here. So unfortunately, we've got a conflict there. But uh, he mentioned that uh, the group is still very aggressive, but very quick to sell and replacement. Uh, Nasky is, uh, th says, thanks. How can I join this group as a first step? Uh, Nasky, again, go to the Views tab. Uh, find the Atlanta user group in the listing, left click on the link, it'll give you the date and time of the next meeting. Now they are meeting today, so um, they won't be meeting for another uh, month, but uh, uh, check the views about two weeks prior, it'll give you the date, time and directions to the meeting. Uh, you're always welcome to attend the first meeting uh, at no cost, some groups have a, have a cost for the room and projector and screen uh, that they'll charge per meeting or on a on an annual uh, basis. And this one, uh, Pensacola, Florida from George Clark, the user group leader. Uh, the review was actually written by one of the members, uh, Gary Woods, and the group finished in 35th uh, place. You can see the results uh, over here. And, um, you know, again, uh, Picked a, a strong ETF related to the VIX, the UVXY, and uh, up 18.29%, and EDZ up 10.6%. But then they had the dust and the gush, again, I think trying to take some chances there. But uh, you can see uh, from Gary's comments, last year the group was fortunate to win the first ever, or first uh, user group contest from last year. This year is different. We didn't do so well. <laughs> Came in nearly dead last and ran last place for most of the month. So what happened? I'm providing these comments because there is a good lesson to be shared. Perhaps this message reinforces what these one month competitions can teach us. So he's gonna go through what they did. So they started by creating uh, four different portfolios before selecting their entry. They had extreme bullish portfolio packed with two times and three times bullish ETFs. Gold portfolio packed with gold miners and gold ETFs. Hand picked hot stocks portfolio of individual stocks we thought would do well. An extreme bearish portfolio packed with two times and three times contra ETFs. I thought that was a really interesting uh, approach. And after uh, the group went through all this work, we had a meeting on the final day. We voted on the four portfolios. Our group was in total agreement, we believed. And he had a question mark, and this was our major mistake. We, uh, we all thought the market was ready to jump higher and break through resistance, sort of just like we're all thinking now, and move up strongly in August. And it didn't, uh, did not strongly. We studied the charts, we studied the news, we thought President Trump would finally settle down, start thinking about getting elected next year, and we thought interest rates were going to stabilize, we thought China trade situation would calm. We had a rosy view um, uh, about the geopolitical environment, wrong. And the day after we voted for the extreme bullish portfolio and submitted it, uh, President Trump posted his now famous 3 p.m. Eastern tweet that he was going to increase tariffs and the market tanked and continued to tank through August. So, wow, <laughs> pretty interesting. And again, how did the other portfolios do? Extreme bearish portfolio would have won the contest. The gold portfolio would have won the contest and the hand-picked hot stocks portfolio would have placed in the top five. And the moral from uh, Gary and the user group, uh, George is never wise to project into the future, at least certainly not too far into the future, what the market is going to do. 
the lesson and the primary reason that VectorVest exists to give us that daily color guard guidance and then the MTI guidance for a little bit longer term. We as investors and traders follow the market. We go where it takes us. VectorVest helps to do the, us to do this superbly. We aim to do better in the September contest. We are using an automated trading system with the Genius. Uh, we are also working to intervene occasionally to improve results. And nobody in our team has a time to day trade, so some form of automation is necessary. And again, this month we are faced with a potentially volatile market. And he says, to be successful, we have to be nimble, alert, and ready to adjust our trading platform as needed. And that's the message. And by the way, he said, thanks for these international uh, forums. And from last month where I spoke about the multiple moving averages, uh, earnings per share, and the 40-day moving average of RT, um, Gary says at least two of our members have incorporated the 12 moving averages graph settings into the daily stock picking screens. So that's pretty fantastic. And Barry says, uh, good on these groups for admitting their mistakes and willing to learn from them. Yeah, it, it, the whole idea here is, is to share and that we can all learn uh, from everyone else. Uh, and Kamel says, by the way, Pensacola is number 18 in the new, in the new uh, challenge. So that's pretty good in this environment. Lucene says, is anyone in Halifax interested in, the, in a user group? I'm sure there would be, Lucene, and I really encourage you to contact uh, uh, Kathleen uh, use, using the email address in the slides. Yep, we're going to talk about the winning trades. We're going to actually show them on graphs, uh, Edgar, uh, so we'll go through that in a minute. <laughs> uh, here's Malcolm uh, McKenzie, um, the west of England, UK. And they had Sherwin-Williams, which over many years has been a terrific performer, uh, a steady eddy, but for this kind of a contest, maybe steady eddies might not be the best. Uh, but then they also had some losers down here as well, stocks that had been rising, but uh, fell back really strongly in August. And then uh, Stuart uh, Rickaby in 33rd place, uh, Stuart said he will be looking for ways to encourage more involvement from his user group members in uh, upcoming uh, contests. He had a little bit of a challenge getting his members to submit their picks. <laughs> you know, and it's challenging. If you're not meeting in August, you're trying to do everything by email, sometimes that can be a challenge. But um, anyway, he's looking for ways to entice members to, uh, to get more involved. But, you know, uh, he did pick love, which... Um, turned out positive and restoration hardware. Something to keep an eye on in hurricane season is some of these lumber stocks and uh, Caterpillar and some of these others for sure. And there's that EHTH, uh, which had been on a good tear and then fell back. 32nd, uh, John, um, you can see uh, had a couple of winners here. Edwards Life Sciences, a pretty terrific uh, company and and uh, one to put in your watch list for sure. And Starbucks uh, always, uh, well, hadn't been on my radar for a while, but has been again recently having a really nice run. Uh, slowed a little bit now, but uh, always one to keep an eye on. Uh, Michael with Sydney, Australia, uh, had four good uh, winners, including uh, Sapiens, Sapiens uh, International. Uh, be interesting to see what that one's all about. SPNS up uh, 16%. And then Steve uh, Bukowski in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, in the U.S., uh, 30th place. And you can see a couple of good winners here. Oops. And then um, ETSY, pretty big loser at 21%. Uh, Rob is asking, where do I find that presentation about the 12 MAs graph? It was the August International Online Forum, Rob, and tomorrow you're going to receive a document that has information and the recording for that uh, presentation as well as all the other forum presentations that we've had since the beginning, almost four years ago now. Hard to believe four years has gone by. Uh, Orange County, Dr. Stan Carson, uh, you can see again, a couple of winners, Shopify, um, I was surprised it wasn't picked more often than it was, but uh, turned out a, a pretty nice winner uh, for uh, Orange County, California. 
um, Pikes Peak, Joel Rodriguez uh, in Colorado, 28th place, and four winning picks there. Heiko again on the aerospace side had both voting and non-voting um, shares here and did okay with those. Alan McKay, four winners. GSB uh, had been looking good until everybody picked it, and then it went down 15%. <laughs> And Camille says Orange County, by the way, uh, 28th currently, and Lake Geneva 17th currently. Thanks, Camille. Chicago, Illinois, uh, 26th place, and again, four winners, but uh, there's that Etsy big loser that really cost uh, the group, and uh, you can see the equity curve here. <laughs> Scottsdale, um, a big winner with Nugget, um, the three times leverage gold ETF and the VIX uh, ETF as well. So a couple of big winners, but some other ETFs that didn't turn out as well. And Glenn Tompkins uh, from VectorVest, uh, running the uh, Cornelius, uh, uh, Cornelius Australia? <laughs> no, that's Cornelius, um, North Carolina. Sorry about that. I'll change that before I send out the slides. Uh, 24th place and uh, uh, you know, uh, a big winner with TNAV, and I think he was the, that was the only group that picked that one, I think, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, but uh, Horizon Global really cost them, as well as Global Scape. And then uh, Wesley uh, Derbyshire in uh, Arizona sent in a, a quick review. Investment style was aggressive, provided best choices using her own selection uh, method and uh, did not have a, a graph as they were sort of on summer break and didn't discuss the graph layout. Uh, but the criteria, they followed sort of vector vest analysis um, guidelines and rules. And uh, the searches related to the Midas touch and top gainers, uh, no risk management, uh, insights for sharing. Um, Wesley said the HSBC is fun and he just encourages everyone to get involved. Uh, they've got a meeting this morning as well, unfortunately, and Tucson will be discussing the modified rules and obviously approaching the process very differently now that we have control of managing the portfolio going forward. So they picked uh, CMG and MasterCard. Um, certainly MasterCard should be in everyone's watch list and buy on the upticks. Very strong stock performance over many years. Belfast, uh, Paul uh, Kelly, uh, youth group leader, Kirkland, uh, PAGS, ICO, uh, PACOM, all delivered good returns. Uh, Kamel says MasterCard and Visa tumbling big right now. Yeah, it's true. Keep an eye on them. There could be some bargain uh, hunting going on uh, soon, but you don't want to be buying them when they're falling. Buy them when they're rising. Uh, Kirby. Uh, 21st place and 14% uh, uh, on PAG, so that was pretty good from St. Louis, uh, Missouri. Uh, Gene from the Villages in Florida, you can see uh, AYX, uh, uh, the strongest performance there at 15%. And Victor Smith in the Midlands, UK, um, quite a few winners. One fairly significant loser here, but good for 19th uh, place. So a little bit of emphasis there on the pharmas and uh, did okay on it. And Kamel says uh, Charlotte, by the way, is currently 14th and uh, Tucson 34th. And uh, yeah, so Things change quickly in that contest. <laughs> in Oxford, uh, Steve, uh, nice 33% gain on uh, AU, and then uh, just a whopping loss here on Genie uh, Energy. So maybe a momentum play, but um, didn't pan out. And then uh, Ottawa from uh, Ken, Ken Sparks, um, he and uh, Michael Bryden uh, did, did their uh, most of their picking here. Um, so only two actually submitted choices, and the picks were based on momentum. Um, Ken used the Midas Touch uh, stocks and put them into a watch list, and uh, that 
He gave him 50 plus stocks and he narrowed it down by deleting relative timing less than one. And then he graphed them and uh, ultimately uh, used the three and eight moving averages to get the final 10 selections. And Michael used his own search when compared with our submissions, they had five duplicates which were entered and then the other five were mutually agreed upon. And uh, Ottawa was in the lead for quite a while or up in the top five, but they did fall back. And um, as Ken mentions here, he says, uh, <laughs> well, risk management, once the stock's replaced, you can only hope and pray, <laughs> which is true, um, because you can't change them in, this, in that competition. Uh, and he said with momentum stocks, it seems that the faster they rise, the harder they fall, uh, as was our case. Had a couple of big winners uh, early on, and then they did uh, uh, fall back pretty strongly. So, uh, so that was the case there. And um, so he's glad that we're having a new uh, format there. So using stops, maybe taking uh, half profits after you've got a nice gain, those sorts of things would be good insights from the Ottawa group. Next meeting is September 19th. And uh, everyone, of course, is welcome if you live in the Ottawa uh, area. And then October 12th in Ottawa, we have the Smart Investing Made Easy free workshop, and that's in the views. So you can look at that. Uh, Paul uh, Peterson uh, finished in 16th, and Paul has a mic, and so we're going to test this out, and it, it may not work, but uh, I'm going to ask Paul just to review his uh, review and just add any comments, and uh, we have to be brief, of course, and everyone understands that, but uh, let me just see if I can find uh, Paul here, and we've got quite a large turnout, so it might take me just a second. They are alphabetized, which should help someone like me. <laughs> and uh, we haven't done any mic tests, so we'll just have to see how this turns out. Paul, are you able to hear me? Yes, Stan, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, very strong. Uh, welcome to our uh, forum. Delightful to hear from yes. you. So, oh, if you would, go ahead. Oh, awesome. If you wouldn't mind, Paul, just kind of review the Aptos California um, approach to this and any insights uh, for, for all of us attending. Sure. Well, just briefly, um, knowing that uh, the uh, market's been very volatile and the tweet storms uh, come and go. So I took it uh, pretty, uh, pretty carefully, uh, conservatively. I just mostly picked the top. Um, relative safety stocks <clears throat> and uh, made sure they had plenty of volume and the RT was uh, greater than one. So uh, just took the safe route knowing uh, that's, that's a good vector vest uh, uh, feature there. Well, and that's what I really noticed about your uh, submission is you didn't have big winners, but you didn't have big losers. And that's probably a product of the relative safety sort that you were using. Yes, I hate to lose money. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. And uh, Paul uh, mentions here he's been uh, working with stocks for over 40 years and, and continues to learn. I think that's true for all of us. And, uh, you know, I'm sure you'd like to, to welcome people to attend your meetings. I notice they are on the first Saturdays of the month. Yes, <clears throat> yes, they sure are, and they vary anywhere from one to like uh, seven people. A lot of people oh. travel around here, so okay. you, you, never know. you never know who's going to show up, but uh, it's always educational, including me. Oh, well, that's awesome. All right, well, thank you very much, uh, Paul. really appreciate it, and uh, we will move on. You bet. Thank you. Thanks very much again, Paul, and uh, always interesting. Notice Disney in there. Folks, if Disney is not in your watch list, I, I think it should be. Um, many of you know they are coming out with their new um, live streaming channel, a little bit of a competition to Netflix and uh, Apple and others uh, now. So um, they've made some good acquisitions recently, and um, I think you want to at least have it in your watch list. It's been a good performer over many years, so something to keep an eye on. Uh, Kevin from Boston. Oh, <laughs> uh, 
Uh, that's not 59th place. Uh, but boy, my uh, typing was not great uh, uh, this week, I guess. But anyway, <laughs> let's see. Aptos was 16th, so I guess uh, Kevin was 15th. <laughs> or sorry, yeah, so uh, 15th place. And again, a big winner here with Apps, uh, 38%. And uh, then a couple of big losers that took the shine off of the portfolio, but a pretty good performance uh, overall. Yeah, uh, Santiel, I, I definitely, uh, the, these uh, snapshots are all August 30th, okay? I should have mentioned that. Uh, this is the contest uh, period. It was uh, August 1st to August uh, 30th. So, yeah, all of these stock prices are going to be uh, uh, old. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Marlene says, too much scotch while Stan was typing. Well, uh, usually when I'm uh, doing these reports, I've got my uh, Grand Marnier uh, sitting on, on, the, uh, on the desk, and much to my wife's dismay, uh, I'll be sipping on that, and that's what uh, gives me the energy. <laughs> At least I think it does. It's all psychological, right? Anyway, so here's from uh, Brisbane, uh, Sandra, 14th place, um, Kirkland, so a little bit of gold there, Pegs, uh, Synopsis, and uh, Edwards Life Sciences, so a little bit of uh, emphasis there. You can see Abbott Labs, so some pharmaceuticals. And overall, uh, some good performances um, with Kirkland and Pegs, and then just one stinker here with EHTH. Here's James Flynn, thirteenth um, place. Uh, found uh, found it to, be, to be more like throwing a dart. <laughs> well, there was a little bit more to it than that, but I can understand the sentiment when you can't change uh, um, horses in midstream, uh, but. Uh, uh, it's not really an investment contest, that's for sure, uh, although uh, Paul certainly took it more, you know, looking at it as kind of how he would invest, but typically it was momentum and, and uh, picking those uh, hot stocks. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, he's glad that they recognize that and change the rules for this new one. My understanding is they might change the rules every month just to keep things uh, interesting, but we'll see. Selection me method, uh, used his watch list, copy of the screens attached. Favorite to graph will be on the next slide, I believe. And uh, next meeting, September 28th. And um, he certainly welcomes everyone uh, out to that. And he says it's not an easy job being a user group leader. And that's why it's so important that members get out and show their support and uh, participate. Because I know user group leaders put a lot of time and effort into every meeting. and trying to make sure it goes well. So if you can support them, please do. Uh, risk management, uh, they used ETFs, and they used ETFs greater than $10. And uh, so that helped a little bit. Uh, Soxel's in there, uh, NUGT was their big winner. But 13th place, pretty, uh, pretty successful. Um, you can uh, see James gave us some of his layouts here. Uh, using the 9 exponential moving average and the 55 um, simple moving average in the price portion of the graph and pretty nice crossovers here. And then in the bottom, uh, a little bit um, creative here or, or unique, uh, the RT uh, with an 18 exponential moving average in um, red on the, uh, on the RT, or the RTs in red and the exponential moving average in blue here. Um, pretty good crossover signal. So thanks for sharing that, uh, James. And then um, this was interesting as well, Using just follow the dots on the MTI. So when the dots are rising, you know you're, you've got some, uh, some pretty strong uh, momentum there as well. And, um, and he uses this uh, end of day and then also on a two minute basis, uh, during the day, and you can see his RT here uh, with the moving average uh, again as well. And the EMA on the MTI is a nine, nine day EMA. Actually, this is the intraday two minute. So that's a pretty good intraday setup.
Oh, Kevin says, by the way, uh, and Kevin, the user group leader is with us from Boston. He says, we looked at industries that went up last year in the month of July and August and then cherry picked the best stocks out of those industry movers. Fantastic approach, uh, Kevin, you know, on a couple of fronts. Um, sorry, I didn't see your note uh, earlier. Um, but, uh, you know, you got some nice winners um, using that, uh, that approach. And I'm sure you checked the industry graphs um, in August or, or, or July leading up to it as well. So very strong approach. And then uh, follow the dots on a daily basis with the MTI. This is now end of day, and you can see um, the MTI just following the dots again with that exponential moving average of nine on the MTI. I've been using uh, an eight on the MTI for many years, but a nine works pretty darn good. And I like the use of the dots in the style. That's pretty fantastic. And then just a suggestion from James, uh, when VectorVest reviews this, they can have a look. But for those that have the Derby, it'd be nice to float in the two graphs to the home page, the, the Derby timing indicator, for example. So thanks for that. Um, didn't mention when the next meeting is, but uh, hopefully you will have a chance to look at that. Uh, Wayne from Houston, uh, 12th place, and some very nice performances here, Harmony, Yamana, and then, unfortunately, the steel did not work out and the energy did not work out. Lethbridge, uh, Glenn, uh, Glenn Gibb, our uh, new user group leader, kicking off, uh, getting involved in the contest uh, with, with some help from Dave, one of our members. And you can see the, uh, the results uh, there. And uh, Glenn, I know you've got your mic on. Let me just see if I can find you. And I, I, I can see we're going to have to move really quickly on time because we've got some speakers coming up as well. Let me just uh, go here. But I think it's fun to, and, and valuable to, to hear from those that indicated they have a mic. We'll see if we can uh, find uh, Glenn. <laughs> All right. Alphabetically. Okay, this may take me too long. I apologize. Oh, found Glenn. Let's just see. Glenn, are you there? I'm here, Stan. That's awesome. Do you have a comment about sort of your approach and, uh, and what you're doing now in the, in the September uh, contest as well? Well, I can always say that we can serve as horrible examples. <laughs> well, I don't think 11th place is too bad. <laughs> that wasn't too bad. We were as high as sixth at one point in time. Um, but what we have found, especially in September, is that set it and forget it just is not going to work. We tried to go on a rules-based um, approach. Uh, we actually had our – we started because we had a down signal uh, in, in our system, and we just uh, – we, we, like it just recently, like it was a totally wrong approach and uh, we are trying to catch up in a hurry. All right. Thanks, Glenn. Uh, so, yeah, and I know Glenn and Dave are learning a lot about the auto timer and the genius, and we'll be sharing with our uh, Lethbridge user group down the road um, so that they can automate a bit more. But uh, picking good stocks, and uh, hopefully we continue to, to see that one uh, rise as well. Thank you, Glenn. Uh, and, and you can tell I'm kind of rushing a little bit here, but here's Bob from Seattle and some really good picks there. Um, Royal Gold is always a strong one from the gold side and Kirkland, Shopify in there. Uh, Stephen from Canberra. And, uh, and Stephen is with us. Let me just see if I can uh, find Stephen in the list and just give us a quick review of their approach here. And you can read the slide while I'm uh, looking. It's the first time we've done this, folks, so bear with me. <laughs> I think it's an, I don't know what you think, but tell me if you like the approach of hearing from different user group leaders uh, or presenters in this way or, or uh, just, just uh, some of our faithful in the audience uh, that have insights. But uh, I think it's a pretty good uh, 
approach, but I need to know what you think, I guess, more than what I think. <laughs> oh, Stephen, where are you? Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry. We do have a lot of names to go through. There we go. And this is all the way from Australia. Stephen, can you hear me? And I believe I've activated your mic. I've got you loud and clear, Stan. Oh, that's awesome. Well, thank you. And I'd love to hear your overview of the approach with a ninth place uh, finish. Well, what we did was we stood back and took a, uh, a long distance shot at it and said, we don't know what sort of tweets are going to come out. So we're going to have to come out with strong stocks so that we developed a very simple watch list that just went through every sector, looked at uh, top 10 VST, price rising, uh, earnings per share rising, and um, VST um, was in the original selection technique. And then we just put an RT times CI uh, sort on it and said, that's it. Um, and it seemed to come out pretty well, but yes, we did get bitten a few times in there. <laughs> just the one stock, Globalscape, um, really cost you, it looks like, from a little higher uh, uh, finish. <laughs> Yeah, um, absolutely brilliant exercise to do and um, taught us a lot on uh, how to build a watch list. But uh, one of the problems in the Australian market is that we have very, very low price stocks, penny stocks, and many of them. So it's important to develop a watch list that uh, keeps picking up the cream and uh, dropping the rubbish off every so often so that uh, you're only develop you're only working with the good stuff and uh, oh. it seemed to work quite well for this sort of competition but I wouldn't dare invest this way <laughs> well thank you very much Stephen and I really appreciate it I know it's early morning there I don't know how early but I know it's early <laughs> so thank you so uh, much coming up to half past two in the morning oh gosh well you'll soon be able to head off to bed thank you so much Stephen thank you all right and uh, Stephen's group by the way meets on October uh, 10th the second uh, Thursdays and uh, you can see their focus there so pretty fantastic and Lance from uh, Winnipeg, uh, you can see they were cherry picking from graphs, looking at top uh, VST stocks. And like a lot of our members, uh, uh, you know, we pull in stocks from other services and they used uh, IBD's Investors Business Daily's top 50 and, um, and then check them out with the VectorVest layout. And then they used some of the members group picks and tried to pick some high flyers uh, for the month, three people of the group met at Boston Pizza to agree on picks, and some sent by email to ask for their picks. Uh, favorite uh, indicators on the graph are the 40-day uh, uptrend uh, and the 3 and 8 uh, crossover using the DEW timing. Uh, top VST stocks ultimately was their, their best search. Risk management, some diversification, but looking back, would have done better had they swung for the fences with the hot uh, sector or sectors. Insights for sharing, uh, the one hour meeting at Boston Pizza was a fun time. And I think that's one of the messages coming through loud and clear today is how uh, fun and um, it is to get together with fellow investors and approach it that way. Next meeting is September 19th. So I hope you'll get out and uh, uh, support Lance and the group if you live in the area. And uh, they'll be going over there current uh, portfolio. And uh, Irwin, um, seventh place, and Irwin is with us. Um, let's just see from Appleton, Wisconsin, if I can get Irwin to make a few brief comments. And I realize uh, time is of the essence. If people have to go, that's fine. Just know you'll get the recording uh, very quickly. I did get a message that the um, YouTube is not working today. Oh, gosh, I hope I pushed the right buttons. <laughs> uh, but anyway, it should be. I've got it set and going. So, uh, not sure what happened there. Sorry, if, sorry about that. If it's not, I'll I'll be doing a Maya culpa with our VectorVest uh, media specialist people. And by the way, uh, Kamel taking note of things for us says Appleton, Wisconsin, is number thirteen in uh, the contest, and he also made a note that Lethbridge is number. 
<laughs> All right, I'm sorry. I'm trying to find Irwin here. I digress. And by the way, thanks for those comments about uh, uh, about um, this format. People seem to really, really like it. It's uh, great to hear from from other uh, voices. So that's pretty cool. All right, I'm looking for Irwin. <laughs> All right, eat. Okay. There we go. And no, I don't have my Grand Marnier right now. <laughs> I'm just not good at uh, uh, searching here. Irwin, okay. Uh, Irwin, I've got you. Um, can you hear me? And your mic is on. I can hear you. Awesome. Can you hear me? We can hear you loud and clear. So good thanks. deal. So could you give us a quick overview of uh, your approach and what you thought of the uh, seventh place finish? Well, I, I'm, I'm proud of my group. What we did, as I, as I mentioned in my comment there, I asked, you know, just we looked at a bunch of charts and my group picked, made the picks. And then I told them I want to have a couple golds in there. And uh, I added a couple other stocks. And then I... Looked at the whole list when it came time to submit it, and I submitted what we had. So wow. I, I'm I'm really proud of my guy my guys and guys and gals. <laughs> a really um, really really terrific uh, approach. And uh, again, I noticed uh, the insights industries um, identifying industries with rising RT uh, with plenty of searches for this, and then cherry picking. Uh, another great approach. Yeah, the uh, the the rising RT I think was uh, was a good key there. Yeah. All right. Well, Erwin, thank you so much for joining us and for uh, for sending in that report. Well, you're welcome. Great talking with you. Thank you. All right. So you can see the winners there in harmony. One of the gold picks uh, Irwin threw in there. Uh, pretty nice uh, uh, returns and CDE. And then Bill from uh, Dallas, um, uh, in August, they had everyone submit their top 10 stocks. And I was interested in the sort, RS times growth times RT times PE. Uh, you know, obviously uh, some good returns from that. Took the top 10 and ran with them. And uh, used the minimum requirements uh, called for in the rules. And uh, they've done things differently in September. I'm sure, uh, Kamel, will let us know how you're doing. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, um, uh, asked what they wanted to submit and how many in each category. So that was interesting, uh, looking at categories uh, in terms of speculative uh, goals and conservative. 28 uh, people responded, and they ended up with four speculative, four conservative, and two gold for September. So that was pretty cool. And uh, gave them several choices and picked the most popular including the profit locker, 50 and 10% uh, stops. So they've got a trading system for September. Personally, these are fun, but unrealistic in some respects. And I think we all know a contest is, is uh, not true trading, but there's learning. And that's what we're finding out today. Uh, in September, we were forced to buy into a confirmed down or be disqualified. So <laughs> uh, should have bought one share only of the minimum five. Uh, yeah, so there's different approaches. But um, he says, uh, not complaining. The object is to get us involved, which is certainly, it certainly did for the 30 active participants here in Dallas. We're having fun with it. That's pretty cool. All right. So thank you for that. And ZS, we, or ZS, we haven't seen that one yet, but it was down about 18%. And otherwise, you would have finished even higher. And Terry in fifth place. Um, I'll get Terry on the line here to give us a nice uh, quick summary. If I can find Terry, it should be uh, easy. There we go. So Terry, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Yes, fantastic. Welcome. All right, great. Take it away. We'd love to hear just again, just a quick summary of, of um, the best of worst, how you set this up. <laughs> and All right, um, this is, under the comment about favorite graph setups for HSBC, that's um, that's our basic philosophy. I'm pretty conservative, um, and he was talking about Perry, and Perry was a uh, 
a real aggressive stock for me. I know in my group uh, it wasn't. And I, whoever picked that is going to yell at me because I forgot who, who, who actually <laughs> picked Barry. But I took those. Uh, I took stocks that our group picked, um, and we basically um, did what I talked about there. Uh, just looking for phase changes and just trying to find something. Um, uh, that we thought was, you know, going to work further in the future. And then Perry was our aggressive one for me. I just stuck it in there. And who knew that it was going to do that? The only the only thing I had on Perry that was good, I did draw a trend line back when it first broke back in uh, July. And then it, it sort of hit the moving, it hit that uh, uptrend line and then bounced off. And that, that told us there was buyers coming in. Awesome. And then the one big thing, and I, I'll, I'll, I'll end with this, uh, on the 12th, um, we had a doji with a yellow bar in the in the uh, volume, and that means it's an actual true doji. We're open and close are the same. And I'm trained back in the 70s on the doji that it's, it's not really an indecision. There's going to be something big will happen, some move up or down, and you'll see that it uh, it eventually did move farther north so i was really happy with that that's a terrific uh, insight thank you and by the way your next meeting monday uh, september 23rd yes awesome um so it'd be seven to nine and um we're going to talk about the hspc and where we are and, and uh, we've got some other things that we're looking at too with this so it, it's kind of interesting and Terry uh, Land was asking regarding the uh, the phase change. You were, uh, that's where you had that base, and you're looking for a bit of a phase uh, breakout of that. Is that what you? How, or tell, tell me how you would describe it. Uh, phase change um, in the August. You couldn't really do. You couldn't really make any changes. But now we can. But a phase change would be when it would move from um, above the 50 or the 200 uh, moving average. Uh, pretty. It's a pretty basic approach, but you, you'll find whether you're bullish if you're above the, the 50 and the 200, and your 50 is above the 200, you're in a bullish phase. So uh, you want to be you want to be in that that stock. Awesome, Terry. Thank you so much. That's a that's a great uh, review as well. So thank you so much. All right, Stan. Thank you. All right, and fourth place, Long Island. Uh, Steve Bogart. Uh, Really a strong performance, uh, six winners, just the four losers. Unfortunately, uh, eHealth <laughs> caught a lot of our uh, our groups uh, to the downside, but um, Alexo and Kirkland, uh, Silver Standard, INS, all really strong. And uh, Boeing, and I don't know what everybody thinks about Boeing. I've been reluctant to go back in uh, with with pending lawsuits and everything else, but it certainly paid off for uh, for Steve and his, his group. So I, I guess it still needs to be in our watch list. But uh, thank you, Gord, for those uh, comments. And Camille says on Boeing, uh, don't try to catch a falling knife. Well, that, that's certainly my concern as well. And uh, Dr. David Furlong, third place uh, from San Antonio. Uh, you can see they scooped up this MCRB for a 52% gain, which really propelled their entry. They had a couple of big winners here uh, with DRD as well, and then um, a couple of big losers. So uh, that kind of pulled them back, or they could have done a little bit uh, better, but pretty good. And then on uh, Regina, uh, Allen and uh, Irwin, um, really do a terrific job with the Regina uh, group. And by the way, they are on Meetup. If you type in Regina user group Meetup, uh, you'll find uh, Regina, and you can uh, possibly join <laughs> uh, and get their uh, their notes from the meetings and so on. Uh, but anyway, it's a pretty good, pretty good system. And uh, they finished second, and they were right up there. It was a real good horse race between uh, Regina and Coburg, and you can see all 10 winners. And uh, from uh, from Irwin, uh, we, uh, no, I'm not sure if Irwin, I'm, I believe Irwin was on holiday, so I, uh, Irwin did submit this report. Let me just see, but I, I was looking for him earlier and I didn't see him in the list because he is on holiday. Let me just have a quick look if you don't mind, but you can just be reading a little bit of his notes there. 
And yeah, and Kamel says Regina's dropped off to 37th in the current contest. So maybe when Irwin and is back, they'll get together and uh, do some modifications. I don't know. <laughs> uh, no, I don't see Irwin. I'm sorry. Um, it may just be me. Oh, says he's on the line. All right, Irwin, I'm going to find you. I just didn't go far enough. <laughs> You know, there's probably a better system. I just don't know go to webinar well enough, but there's probably a better system to find people. But uh, I'm just going to uh, do what I do. <laughs> I'm getting close. I know I am. There we are. Erwin, can you hear me okay? Yes, I can, Stan. Oh, and we can hear you beautifully. hope you had a great holiday and... Welcome back, and if you would give us a quick review of your approach, I think it would be greatly appreciated. Thank you, Stan. Uh, I know our approach was, was highlighted earlier in August, so I'm not going to spend a heck of a lot of time on it, but what we did, we met on July 20th uh, as a group, and at that time uh, we started uh, using the different Unisearch selections, and uh, also we're, we're cognizant of what VectorVest had been saying in the previous few weeks. And one of the things that, that uh, VectorVest had highlighted is that gold had been starting to perform in June. And so we thought, let's have a look at some of the gold stock uh, searches and, uh, and, and, and look at those as, as something that has been performing to date. And, and we went through that and actually gold bull rush, which was a new one for us, turned out to be a, a selection that produced the best results in the near term leading up to the meeting. So from the beginning of July till July 20th. And uh, we thought, okay, well, let's, uh, let's put, put that in, but let's not just choose the top 10. Let's, let's look at the top 20 or top 30, and then look at the stocks with the most bottom left to up, upward right uh, price patterns and earnings patterns. So we, we looked at all the, the stocks and as a group, we trimmed it down to the top 10 and that's what we, we selected for August. It turned out in our favor in August uh, because the trend did continue right through August. I have to say the same thing was our Achilles heel in September because at the end of the month, we decided to just let it carry on and we changed a couple of stocks, but otherwise stayed with the same portfolio. And gold about two days into September turned down. And our trading strategy for September was to uh, to sell the gold stocks if they went below the 20 day moving average for more than three days and then replace them with the next highest gold stock with the highest RT. Well, when all gold stocks are going down, which they have been in September, obviously you're replacing bad with bad and uh, it's it's worked out quite negatively for us. So. <laughs> oh, that's, that's uh, hilarious. <laughs> Best laid plans, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Erwin, Good thank you so experience. much. Uh, you know what? You, you, you had a great contest, and I know you, your group had a lot of fun uh, doing it. And you've got a meeting coming up September 28th, so people can uh, certainly look forward to that. Thank you. And uh, anyone who's in the Regina area is more than welcome to attend. That's awesome. Thank you, Erwin. You bet. Bye. All right. And our first place winner, Don Wellwood. Uh, an amazing uh, battle there with Regina last time, but kind of running away with it a little bit in the current uh, contest and doing really well. And you might recall uh, Don presented to our international online forum a few months ago on his um, technique for using the Fibonacci. And uh, I, I know Don is, is planning to be here. He probably is here. I just got to find him and uh, would love to uh, to hear his take on uh, his approach last time and what he's doing now to get him, him and his group in uh, first place. So, Don, I'm looking for you. <laughs> okay. Oop. Okay, Don, I found you. Can you hear me okay, Don? Can we hear you? Uh, I can certainly hear you, Stan. Can you awesome. hear me? Yes, perfect. Okay. We're... Uh... Connected. <laughs> All right. Well, I've uh, time is getting a little tight. We want to look at a few graphs, but please take us through your approach and any insights that you can share with us and uh, and how you've gotten off to such a great start in the September contest would be valuable to everyone. Okay. Glad to uh, glad to do it. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, 
I guess for the August contest, we started at our July user group meeting and uh, really discussed what we thought the U.S. market was going to do in the month of August. And, uh, you know, the group went back and forth and the conclusion really was that we felt it was going to be flat to down. And with that in mind, uh, funny enough, uh, uh, we had talked earlier in the meeting uh, about gold and in fact uh, pulled up the Huey and looked at it and uh, using the Midas Touch, a uh, beautiful program for gold, uh, really confirmed gold was in a good place and would be a good place to uh, store money uh, for the month of August uh, if anybody wanted to do it personally. When I introduced later on in the meeting, the contest and its rules, uh, uh, the members, a number of them suggested we do all gold in the portfolio. And uh, my comment back was perhaps not all gold, but maybe the majority. Uh, and I guess I'm coming out of the corner that says, never put all your eggs in one basket. Um, on that basis, at the meeting, the group actually picked uh, eight out of the 10 stocks that uh, went into our August portfolio. And uh, I went out to the, uh, the remaining members uh, uh, and chased them down by email the following day. And from the replies I received, I cherry picked uh, the remaining two stocks and that's how we came up with the portfolio for August and uh, the results uh, speak for themselves uh, I, but, but I think uh, by sticking a few like Shopify and uh, a few others in there uh, uh, just put it over the fence All right. so that was that was August uh, September, the philosophy was a little different. Uh, uh, Glenn Tompkins and I talked uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, and um, he was curious as to how I came up with energy in the early part of the September contest. And I said to him, uh, bottom fishing. I uh, again, uh, you know, this is a contest you can change. It's a contest where the, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> uh, excuse me again. Uh, the market has had not really done a turn at the time uh, into uh, anything up. We did have a, a DEW up that was imminent, and I was, I was certainly looking at that. But what a beautiful time for bottom fishing. So I went on the search. In that area, <clears throat> excuse me again, and uh, that's how we started off the September portfolio is uh, is uh, with a number of energy stocks. Now they've been shaken out because energy's done a turn, like gold has. Uh, you know, gold in August was in number one position in the industrial uh, uh, chart, and uh, it's in 16 right now. And energy has pulled back. Now it's still performing a little bit, but uh, <clears throat> you know it, uh, it it certainly has pulled back. So um, I think you've you've got to be conscious of what industry. Uh, and I love to come back to one of the uh, charts that I think Doctor D came up with, and. Uh, uh, I, it, it, it says that 40% of your success is going to be going in the direction the market's go, And 40% of your success is going to be going in the direction the industry is going. 10% uh, uh, will be based on the direction the sector's going. And 10% on the stock that you choose. Now, <laughs> Hell, that you can almost throw a dart at the stock. If if you've got the 40, 40, and the 10 going for you, you got 90% on your side that says you're going to make money. Uh, <clears throat> the stock you pick will determine how much you make. And that's been one of my golden rules, and I just will bring that up at every meeting. 
because there's nothing more important than that one. That's awesome, Don. And just a question that's come in. Um, did you use searches then, or did you strictly go directly to the um, to the stock viewer or the uh, industry viewer? And, uh, and and then also just a comment on the timing uh, that we had the DEW signal, and you went bottom fishing there. And I was noticing also that a lot of the one day derby winners were were bottom fishing. So really astute to uh, to go that direction. Well. You know, to add to that, I look at the views pretty regularly, and I knew the uh, Derby winners uh, for the previous day had come up as bottom fishing stocks. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me again, I reviewed a few of those and uh, charted a few of the stocks, and then I went to a couple of, uh, of bottom fishing areas that I like. Uh, to look at, which is uh, really, I guess, jailbreak, uh, S&P 100 slash RT, and Pirates Long, and they're, they're a three that usually turn up in the, uh, you know, the, the, the derby at, uh, at some point after the first week of, of bottom fishing, uh, or prime wave up, uh, if you want to call that the, the, the kickoff to bottom fishing because it pretty well is <clears throat> so um i was able to select from there and and that in fact as i said to glenn that highlighted the energy because a number of the stocks that came out of the bottom fishing highlighted the energy awesome well don that's terrific we're going to look at a few stocks and um and get some further insights but congratulations again on winning uh the contest uh for august and uh, and on your great start uh wish you and your group all the best and uh, the same for all the groups and i think we really uh, got a lot out of uh everyone's comments today and uh, you've got a meeting coming up so if you want to invite people to your meeting that would be awesome uh, yes, by all means. It's a new venue, Turtle John's. Uh, it's a bigger room. It's uh, more comfortable all the way around, both in decor and furniture and everything else. So that's on the uh, Wednesday coming, uh, the 18th of September, and we do it 7 to 9. And uh, for anyone uh, who hasn't been out that's new, uh, uh, come on out. Love to have you. And uh, <clears throat> I know I've already had and been in contact with a number of members, and uh, everybody's jumping at it. So it's going to be a good meeting because it, it, when to sell is is a, a challenge for all of us. <clears throat> and uh, you know it's way too easy to fall in love with a stock. So that's the topic. <laughs> all right, that's fantastic. Thank you so much, Don. All right. And we'll just finish up here with looking at a few stocks. And uh, I realize we're close to the end of our time, but um, I did promise we would look at a few stocks. And let's just do that really quick. And we're focused on the U.S. right now because that is the contest that we've been uh, looking at. So what I did was just create a little watch list here in the, in the watch list viewer forum. And so these were the top gainers that I identified, uh, not all of them, but uh, uh, some of the ones that were highly uh, selected as well. So you can kind of see, you know, back, let's go back to, uh, to August. So, and actually July 31st, where they would have been looking at these. So people were looking a lot at the, the high RT, other than Yuxin and uh, MCRB, uh, that was, these were kind of bottom fishing in that approach. But let's just have a look at these graphs really quickly here. So I've got a little bit of a different graph layout. You know that I use different layouts. I really like the multiple moving average layout I showed you last month, but uh, this is the one with the three and eight EMA. And when you're looking at momentum plays, uh, the three and eight, the three exponential in blue and the eight exponential in pink, as well as the minus, minus touch layout, you can see how well it's uh, served. But um, if I take this now back to July 31st, this is when the groups would have made their choices. Uh, Apps was looking pretty good. Um, 
it, it had fallen back a little bit if I put on the price. So it's fallen back and was basing. So that was a good choice with earnings per share rising. Uh, on the gold side, uh, let's see, I thought I changed the date here. <laughs> oh, I went back into 2018. Oh, my goodness me. All right, let's get this organized here. <laughs> I am rushing. And, and no, I don't have my Grand Marnier here. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go back to uh, July 31st. There we go. So on July 31st, 2019, so uh, AU had fallen back. It actually gapped down. And uh, so it was truly a bottom fishing gold stock. But earnings were rising, so that was a good choice. Uh, Perry had, a, had been on a really nice uh, run here as well. And the RT moving average of 40, moving up nicely. So that was a good choice as well. Uh, Nugget had a big down day the day before the contest. So interesting that I think we only had one one or two groups choose Nugget, but uh, they were rewarded when gold turned right back up and, uh, you know, off of the uh, uh, support level, just turned right back up. Boom. And then AUY, three and eight, very strong, and everything looked good on that one as well. DRD. So this is just another graph layout that you might uh, consider. Kamel says, can you add on balance volume? Those of you that read my essay last week, uh, it was last week or the week before, I do love this on balance volume and I'm just about halfway through um, the, the book <laughs> from George Lane, the creator of the, uh, the on balance volume and it's pretty fantastic. Uh, picked it up from Amazon for 19 bucks, and uh, it's pretty fantastic. But anyway, it's, it's a pretty good indicator of, uh, you know, when buyers are accumulating uh, shares. So you can see that started to happen back here. If I uh, increase the size here a little bit, uh, so you can kind of see it broke out here, and sure enough, price, it's, it's, it's intended to be a bit of a predictor of, uh, volume. <laughs> Lid says, what a great idea, having a Grand Marnier right now. Isn't that a great way to spend a Saturday? <laughs> uh, so there you can see a, an ETF. So it was basing and uh, off it went. So I think some pretty good picks. So choose your favorite graph layout. You can go through the slides when you get them tomorrow and create your own watch list and have a look at some of these. I think you'll be very um, interested. This one really intrigued me. And actually, I meant to look at a six-month graph. This one intrigued me because here was the date of our contest. And this was a low price stock at $2.12. And what intrigued me is um, it, it didn't take much of a move to get a 25% a gain. And the... RT moving average of 40 was rising, earnings was rising, on balance volume was had been rising, was steady, and uh, and it's continued in September with on balance volume continuing to rise, and the RT moving to rise. <laughs> Marlene says can't match your taste, but we are kegging this afternoon. That's awesome. All right. Well, listen. Um, I just think it was so valuable to have our user group reviews and uh, and especially the uh, the reports uh, from from the, everyone who participated in that. Um, it, it was really good, uh, Marty. It's not it's not the numbers on the al on balance volume. It really is the direction that's going to be most valuable to you. Okay. All right, let me just quickly finish off with the slides. I'm not sure there was much left here. Uh, oh, for, for any, anybody new on the webinar, we do offer a 30-day trial for $9.95. You get access to Canada, and, or well, your country, whichever country you live in, and the U.S. Uh, for $9.95 and uh, the U.S. dollars. So check it out. You get all the tools and reports. I know you'll love it. That's the new contest. There's some pretty major um, prizes there, so I'm hoping more groups will get involved. And those are the rules. And then our next meeting is Saturday, October 5th. 
So we look forward to seeing you there. In the meantime, you can email me. Look for the, for the email tomorrow. I'm not sure how the email arrives. I think sometimes it goes to spam and junk because it's sort of sent to myself because I'm blind copying everyone. So you'd have to look for it. <laughs> All right. So it sounds like we had a good forum. Everybody really enjoyed it from the comments that are uh, uh, coming in and uh, again that was really made possible with all the great support from the user groups and uh, I think it's uh, pretty fantastic. I want to thank Ashley again for helping out all the way from Cornelius uh, corporate offices and uh, pretty uh, pretty cool. All right. So the title of that book somebody's asking is by Joseph Granville it's the new key to stock market profits. And a couple of people, when I discussed this uh, last time, sent me a link to uh, the best uh, Amazon sites. And uh, I was so surprised to be able to pick it up for uh, under $20 with free shipping. <laughs> All right, so hopefully everybody enjoyed it. Looks like you have and got a lot out of it. Um, a lot of great ideas. Uh, you'll definitely want to review the uh, recording. Uh, you can stop it. And forward it and on and so on. But uh, in the meantime, I hope you have a great rest of the weekend. And again, you'll have uh, slides plus my uh, Word document sometime tomorrow. Uh, don't know how early, but you'll definitely have it sometime tomorrow. All right. So thanks again, everyone.